I'm having troubles. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the New Jersey ACAC uh, Virtual College Fair. We're glad you've joined us for this session. This is session C9. Um, and we are looking forward to hearing from our six colleges and universities. Because this is a webinar, your camera and your microphone are off. So the only way you can communicate with the presenters is using the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. You can type those questions to the presenters at any time during the presentation or before or after they present. Our presenters will then respond to you in kind. They may also use the chat feature to drop links or contact information to you, so keep an eye on that as well. Unfortunately, this is our last session for this college fair tonight, so there are no more sessions for you to sign up for, but you can certainly go back and review any sessions you may have missed or learn about other colleges by visiting strivescan.com slash New Jersey, and you can search for the schools that most interest you there. So without any further ado, I'd like to get our presentation started tonight, and our first presenter is from Stony Brook University. Good evening. My name is Ralph Donnell. It's not Catherine McFarland, as you may see on the, all right, on my screen. But I am the North Jersey admissions representative for Stony Brook. Stony Brook is part of the State University of New York. And we are a medium-sized research university that's located in the hamlet of Stony Brook, 60 miles east of New York City, on the North Shore of Long Island. We are a university of 25,000 students, 17,000 undergraduate, 8,000 graduate students. We, we offer over 200 majors, minors, and combined degree programs. Those programs are in one of the following colleges or schools at Stony Brook. Our largest college is the College of Arts and Sciences. And we have a College of Engineering and Applied Science, which includes, which includes computer science. We have a College of Business. We have a School of Journalism and Communications. We have a School of Marine, Atmospheric, and Environmental Sustainability Studies. We have a School of Nursing. We have a School of Health Management, Health Professions, and Health Technology a school of social welfare, social work, and we have a medical school and a dental school. We are, as I said, a research university, meaning that we do have bachelor's degrees, of course, but we also have master's and PhD. The advantage for you is that as an undergraduate, when you are a junior, you can start taking graduate courses. Those courses go towards your bachelor's degree and they could also go towards a master's at Stony Brook or transfer to another institution, okay, in one year after graduating with your bachelor's. One of the hallmarks of Stony Brook is that we have encouraged all of our students to get involved in research. There's a common misconception that research only involves the STEM areas, but research goes across all disciplines. With our this year, I should mention that we were test optional. I want to talk about admissions quickly. We use the common application. That's the exclusive application that we use. It's very important to us in making a decision, the information that we glean from your common application. We do not have early action or early decision. We had those programs years ago. We have eliminated them and we treat all students equally in the process. We have one deadline, January 15th. We encourage students not to wait till January 15th. The sooner you get your application to us, along with all your supporting documents, we then start reviewing your application for admission. In this current year, we started sending out our admits right before Thanksgiving. The main factor that we are looking for is not your GPA, we are looking underneath your GPA, since every high school has a different method of calculating GPAs. We are looking at your transcript. We're looking at the courses you've taken, the strength of those courses, 
and we're looking at your grades. Second most important factor is what we glean from, okay, the common application, a well-written essay, your involvement out of the classroom, in school, or in your community, a recommendation from your counselor, and a recommendation from a teacher. This year, we were test optional. We were test optional for admissions, merit scholarships, and for our honors programs. And we will be making the announcement that we are test optional for the upcoming year of admissions. We have over just under, I should say, 11,000 students that live on our campus and our housing is guaranteed for all four years. When you are applying for admissions at Stony Brook, you're also in the running for our very generous merit scholarships, which range anywhere from $3,000 each for each of the four years to up to full tuition. We want you to know that our total cost this past year was rounded up to $43,000. That was tuition, room and board, and all fees. I encourage you to look online at the wealth of information we have, and I encourage you as you're doing research to look closely at all of the institutions that are represented here in our session. And then of course, we hope to invite you to our campus next year, starting in August with in-person information sessions and okay, in-person tours. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you so much. We appreciate that information. Our next institution is the University of Pittsburgh. Thank you, Julie. Ooh, uh, I don't think I'm on. Let me make sure. Can people see my screen? Yes, okay, great. Thank you. Uh, greetings uh, from the University of Pittsburgh. My name is Tom Becker. I'm the Associate Director for Regional Recruitment uh, at the University. Dana Hassel, uh, the regional representative that lives in West Orange, uh, New Jersey, uh, is away uh, on, on leave for another week or so, but she should be back here very, very soon. Uh, we're here to talk uh, about Pitt, uh, one of our iconic buildings right here. The Cathedral of Learning is the tallest building of higher education in the Western Hemisphere. Um, all of you will have classes there, should you um, come to Pitt uh, and, and study. Uh, you will see that uh, major discoveries have, have taken place at the university. Jonas Salk is there with the, the jars. Uh, he discovered uh, the polio vaccine at Pitt. We're one of 10 universities that are the leading universities uh, to rid um, or to, to work on COVID uh, this next, uh, this, this cycle. Um, we are a, a regional, uh, we actually are a system campus where we're, there are three regional uh, schools that you could also attend, uh, Bradford, Johnstown, and Greensburg. Uh, about 2,000 students, really more of a liberal arts, small liberal arts education uh, that they provide. So when you apply to Pitt, you're going to actually rank uh, the schools, uh, the, the campuses that you're most interested, Pittsburgh and then your regional campuses or maybe your regional campus first. Um, we're here to talk about the Pitt campus. Uh, I'm here to talk about the Pitt campus. Uh, it's, it's no ordinary town. Uh, Pittsburgh is, is a steel city. We still build things in Pittsburgh, uh, but we talk an awful lot about eds, meds, and tech. Uh, education, medicine, and, and technology. Uh, we are very much uh, a part of this, that we're this jewel in the Rust Belt uh, that has sort of rediscovered itself. And so come when, when we can have in-person tours, come visit and you're gonna get a sense for yourself. You can see right there uh, is downtown Pittsburgh. Uh, our campus sits about three miles from downtown. And so uh, you can see the picture here of the cathedral and then all the buildings there, are basically University of Pittsburgh uh, facilities and uh, downtown, uh, real, real close. Uh, students really talk about the city being their campus uh, because they're out and about in it a lot. Uh, very proud to be ranked the number one a public institution uh, in the Northeast this, this past year. Again, uh, you can see some of the majors, uh, the six teaching hospitals, 19,000 undergraduates, uh, real popular majors for our New Jersey uh, students coming uh, to Pitt. Um, when you apply, hopefully I'm not gonna scare you away, you're gonna apply to Pitt, you're gonna select 
one of five direct entry schools. And actually next year, we're going to have a sixth, but that has not been approved by the um, Board of Trustees. And so look for that in our mailings if you're on our mailing list. But the Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences has uh, 3,000 3, of our 4,300 uh, freshmen. 95% uh, of them are graduating with more than a degree. 30% of, of them are graduating with double degrees and triple degrees. Um, the School of Business Administration, 320 students out of the entering, uh, in, coming into the entering class. Uh, they're going to intern three to four times before they graduate. Uh, really focus on strength finders, looking at your strengths and enhancing those. Uh, the School of Engineering, Swanson School of Engineering, we could double, triple that in a heartbeat. They talk a lot about thinking and doing, allowing you to get your hands on it, having undergraduate lab space, research space, being able to co-op, intern multiple times, uh, international experiences uh, without requiring it, uh, very important to them. Uh, our brand new School of Computing and Information, we've had computer science for over 50 years, um, but now we have our own school. Uh, and the Dean talks about it, uh, computing really being the new humanities of this next generation, because computer science touches everything. And our students have to sort of know and, and help figure that out, uh, what, stu what, what their, their, the end result needs to look like. Um, school of Nursing is the one school that you really have to be focused because it's a direct entry program. Uh, when you apply and you're admitted to the program, um, there is no additional test. You're in uh, and you're going to have um, be in your um, uh, clinical rotations as sophomores. Uh, there are six teaching hospitals. The Nursing Residence Hall is actually physically connected to Presbyterian Hospital. It is a nice, nice setup. Again, come visit and you'll see. Uh, the Honors College, we, we fold on top of the individual schools. Uh, they really take a more inclusive sort of thought process. Uh, they believe that the, the vast majority of their resources should be made available to all students at Pitt. Uh, but there's a cohort of about uh, 600 students in the freshman class that can live together, that can take unlimited honors classes. Uh, if you're interested in that, please, uh, when you're visiting, uh, come and, and tell us more about it and, and we'll uh, get you connected with them. We have graduate school guarantees. So if you're offered admissions to Pitt, uh, you can also be considered for one of these uh, 18 different guarantee programs to graduate school. So if you're thinking medical school, law school, dental, uh, physical therapy, we can consider you for that. That's a, an upper sort of division and another step up in review, but nice opportunity for you. Uh, we are the real deal. We are an in-person uh, university, 400 clubs and organizations, send over 2,000 students abroad, uh, typically in a typical year. Um, and so it's, it's, it's pretty fabulous. I'm running out of my time. These are deadlines. Uh, nowhere on the Common App, Coalition App, Pit App. One does not favor you. Uh, just do your best, uh, whichever one best benefits you. Uh, and take a picture of this slide, and that's your admissions counselor. Have a great day. Thanks, Tom. Our next presenter is from the University of Missouri, or Mizzou. Jordan, take it away. All right, hi everybody. I uh, hope you're having a good evening. My name is Jordan Moore. I am the University uh, of Missouri's regional admissions rep for the Northeast. Uh, so I actually live in the Northern Virginia area and work with all the students in the Northeast. Um, University of Missouri, or what's more commonly referred to as Mizzou, that is our nickname. That is what you will hear people use. Uh, we have about 30,000 college students on our campus. About 24,000 of those are gonna be undergraduate students. The remainder of those are graduate or doctorate students. We are one of six public institutions to house a medical school, law school, and veterinary school all on one campus. Uh, we do house Tigers from all 50 states and more than 120 countries. Uh, so we do have students choosing to join us from all over the world, which makes it really exciting uh, here in Columbia, Missouri. Columbia is where we're located. If you have no idea about Missouri, uh, Columbia is the exact center of the state of Missouri. 
We are about an hour and a half from both St. Louis and Kansas City are on either side of us on Interstate 70. So Interstate 70 runs uh, through the middle of the state and we are smack dab in the middle of that. So we are in between two major metropolitan cities um, and we are a college town. We have a little under 120,000 people that live in Columbia plus our 30,000 college students on top of that. So we're a little bit more of a suburban college town, uh, lots to do around Columbia tons of restaurants and shops. Uh, we host tons of different festivals on our campus each year and in the surrounding area. Over 89 different uh, parks, so hiking, biking, camping, anything like that, super popular for our students um, as well. My favorite thing about downtown Columbia is the fact that it is right across the street from our campus. So uh, it makes it very, very walkable for our students. Um, if they want to go from the quad, they just had class and they want to go downtown um, for lunch, that's really easy. They just step across the street. Um, makes it really, really walkable. No need to have a car but you're welcome to bring a car if you would like. We do have over 300 degree programs. They're housed in 13 different schools and colleges. So lots and lots of different things to choose from. Some of our more popular programs are gonna be our College of Business, our School of Nursing, our School of Health Professions, um, our College of Engineering, and our School of Journalism. We do house the world's first ever School of Journalism. It is something that we are very well known for here in Columbia. We also offer a Discover program for our students if you're undecided, that's totally okay. You do not have to know what you want to major in uh, as a 17, 18 year old coming into college. So we do have a Discover program for those undecided students to kind of help point them in the direction of what it is they might be interested in studying. Here on Mizzou's campus, you're going to hear us talk about something we like to call the Missouri method. Uh, it is learning by doing. We want our students to be out there and active in their field of study. We do not want you to be sitting in a lecture uh, style classroom. We want you to be uh, having internships, uh, extracurricular activities, practicums, clinical rotations, whatever that is for your field of study. We want you to be out there and doing that. Um, so these are a couple of examples. Our prime example is going to be that picture in the bottom right hand corner. That is uh, KOMU. It's our NBC news station. We are the only university to own and operate an NBC news station. It's completely uh, run by our students and faculty within the J School, 365 days a year, um, all hours of the day. So it is a phenomenal facility for our students um, and a prime example of what we're talking about when we utilize the Missouri method. Fun fact for you all, we are home of the original homecoming. So um, it is a huge celebration for our students, a month long celebration, in fact. Um, so, so much fun, lots of different events, parades, all of the royalty, all culminating in our homecoming football game. Uh, we are in the SEC or the Southeastern Conference. So sports are a big deal on our campus. Um, we're in the March Madness tournament coming up. So we're very excited about that. Um, but students uh, love our school spirit and that's kind of part of our identity here in Columbia. If you're looking to apply to Mizzou, uh, we are on the Common App and our university specific application. We're on rolling admissions, which means our application opens August 1st of each year. You can apply at any time throughout the year with one of those applications. Um, the earlier, the better though, if you're looking for those merit-based scholarships. We do need your official high school transcripts. And if you're applying with a test score, we will need that sent directly from ACT or College Board. We did enact a test optional policy this year, and it has officially been extended for our incoming class of 2022 as well. So if you are not able to take a test or would like to apply test optional, we will definitely have that option for our students um, this year and next year. We do have a number of merit-based automatic awards. So when you apply, you do not have to do anything different other than submit your application. We'll automatically review you for those awards. That is gonna be for our students applying test optional or through our traditional process as well. Um, and something I always love to mention to our out-of-state students is our residency process. Missouri is the easiest state to gain residency in. So we do actually allow our out-of-state students to come to Mizzou, live on campus in a dorm, establish residency during their freshman year, become an in-state student, and pay in-state tuition for the remainder of their time. It is a phenomenal program, really only going to find it within the state of Missouri. 
Like I said, my name is Jordan Moore. I'm the Regional Admissions Representative. That is my contact information. We are also offering on-campus tours and visits currently. So if you're able to travel, um, we will host you on campus or we'll host you next year as well um, as things start opening up. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me and go Tigers. Thanks, Jordan. So now we'll head east out of Missouri to Illinois and we'll hear about the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Everyone, my name is uh, Scott Delahunt. I am the regional representative uh, based in New Jersey for the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Uh, at Illinois, we like to talk about the power of the eye. Uh, and what that means is that we're gonna help you harness your power to make your mark on the world. Um, and that all starts uh, with innovation. At UIUC, your most creative cutting edge thoughts are gonna be encouraged um, because innovation is in our blood. About over 150 years ago, founded with a focus on the future. Uh, and we've been creating new and better solutions to large scale problems ever since. So UIUC students and alum uh, have developed some great things, including Play-Doh, the world's first uh, shared computer-based education system in 1960, uh, Mosaic, the world's first graphical web browser in 1993, uh, LEDs, the medical MRI, things you may be more familiar with like YouTube and PayPal. Um, but the challenging and progressive environment at UIUC is going to help you realize your own goals, uh, whatever that may be. Um, which leads me to the next point here that education received at UIC is gonna inspire you to think big. Um, and that all begins with your major. We have over 150 uh, of the uh, majors in 11 different academic communities. Uh, whatever you guys choose to study, you're gonna find that your degree is highly respected from our often recognized programs such as engineering and business, uh, which are ranked number six and number 16 in the country respectively, uh, number 19 in the country respectively, um, to innovative degree options uh, like CS plus um, X programs that allow students uh, to pursue flexible program study, incorporating a strong grounding in computer science with technical or professional training in the arts and sciences, um, or something like our newest undergraduate academic community, which is in the School of Information Sciences. Um, this is actually the number one grad school in the nation for information sciences, and they just started their undergraduate program last year. Uh, most of our programs are also direct admit, meaning that you're gonna apply and be enrolled into a specific major starting in your freshman year uh, if you're admitted. Uh, you can also choose a second choice major on your application, um, and I highly encourage you to do that. Uh, this will allow you to um, have a second choice, um, you know, like a backup major to your uh, first choice major. Um, and I also encourage you to check out this website here is our program explorer It's a clickable uh, website that allows you to look at every single one of our majors um, and see, uh, you know, what, uh, what may be the right fit for you. Uh, and it allows you to talk about more specifics like uh, career options and um, other things about the major. Um, our, every class at UIUC, both in your major and outside of it, has the potential to enhance your perspective and give you new purpose. Um, we have a student to faculty ratio of about 18 to 1, uh, with about 80% of your classes having less than 50 students enrolled in them. Um, and our professors are award winning uh, and actually contribute to fields, um, you know, in their fields in groundbreaking ways. Uh, you're going to actually have direct access to them, uh, both for opportunities and support. Uh, they'll kind of motivate you um, through their passion and knowledge, but also um, be open, have open office hours that you can attend as well. Um, and they are a great um, resource as well if you're interested in research. Um, our alumni uh, also advance their skills through out beyond the classroom um, through prominent internships, including at Fortune 100 companies. Um, they study abroad to grow personally, culturally, and professionally. Um, and they really play a large part in research, uh, whereas a research one institution were among the nation's best in feeling new ideas, new opportunities, and even new industries. Uh, and our research spans all disciplines. It's not just for STEM-based majors. Um, it has interdisciplinary focus, allowing you to work with our Office of Undergraduate Research to find opportunities in your area of choosing. Uh, you can actually start research as early as your freshman year as well. Uh, also, employers are actively seeking our students because they know that they're prepared to succeed at the highest levels. Uh, last year, we had over 9,700 unique employers recruiting our students, for including 86 of the Fortune 100 companies, such as Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. Um, these are some of the Fortune 500 companies that are actually lo located on our campus at Illinois, uh, and some of these are startups as well. The University of Illinois is home to a research park, uh, which is a leading technology hub that cultivates startups and accelerates corporate innovation. Uh, research park has more than 120 companies, and that's growing each year, and these companies include uh, over 50 startups and many different Fortune 500 companies that employ our undergraduate students across all different majors. Um, but you're not going to be just in, uh, involved when it comes to your education or research. Uh, you can also be engaged uh, socially as well. Um, 
So the Illini Pride can be seen through our many different events and activities offered on our campus um, and within the community as well. Uh, whether that be through our great Big Ten sports, um, which uh, they actually just won the Big Ten, the Ben's basketball team just won the Big Ten uh, tournament and our number one seed in the NCAA tournament this year coming up. Um, that brings a lot of energy to our campus um, or through concerts and festivals hosted throughout the year uh, on or around the campus as well. Uh, and a key part of our involvement on campus is this through our student groups. Uh, you're gonna have a choice of more than 1800 different student groups based on your interests. Um, this is really a great way to meet people who care about the same things that you do. It's also a great way to step outside of your comfort zone and explore some new things. Um, Champaign-Urbana is also built for student life um, with two distinct downtown areas that have a thriving arts and culture scene. Um, the areas uh, offer the amenity of like a big city living with a small town feel and everything is going to be very accessible to you by public transit, biking or simply walking. Um, and CU is also a great food town, uh, is actually ranked uh, the greatest Midwest food town by Midwest Living. And for all these reasons, uh, it is actually consistently ranked in the top 10 uh, college town uh, you know, in America. Um, so I am going to um, just put in the chat my uh, information. I really appreciate you guys joining us today uh, and have a great day. Thanks, Scott. And I will uh, vouch for the food in Champaign-Urbana. You've got a pretty awesome food truck scene. So um, next we have Caldwell University. All right, thank you. And hi, everybody. My name is Amber. I'm a senior admissions counselor at Caldwell. Um, so we'll start by talking about the majors that we have to offer. So here is a list of all of our majors and I highlighted the most popular ones for you. So nursing is our top major. Um, it's our most competitive major as well. And that's because it has a 100% success rate. So anybody that's entered that program so far, they have left with a job. Psychology is our biggest program. It holds the most amount of students. Education has a 100% success rate as well. And you guys know that we need educators and nurses more than ever because of this pandemic. Criminal justice is a growing program. And then biology and business are also popular ones. So I'll give you an overview of the campus. Caldwell is located in Caldwell, New Jersey. So that's in North Jersey, and we're about 25 minutes to a half hour outside of New York City. So Caldwell is the suburbs, but you have access to the city because we're right off of what's called Bloomfield Avenue. So you have direct access to public transportation and you know New York City is where those internships and those job opportunities are gonna be. So Caldwell is a private institution and it's also Catholic. The campus is beautiful, it's small, about 2,200 students total, and that includes undergraduate and graduate students. Class sizes are about maybe 10 to 12 students per class, and that's small, so that means that you can't hide, you definitely stand out, but that's always a good thing because that's how you're able to connect with faculty members and build relationships with them. And then lastly, Caldwell has been the affordable choice for a lot of students who attend. 98% of our students, they are either employed, they're in grad school, or they're participating in some type of service project. And although that is a very big number, you definitely have to put in the work to be a part of that 98%. Because the campus is so small, it makes it easier for you to connect with career services or maybe faculty members. Because nine times out of 10, your professors are either in your field or they have a great deal of experience in your field. So with that being said, here is a list of some recent internship placements for our students. And I show you this to let you guys know that just because Caldwell is small, that doesn't mean that we don't have connections to some really popular businesses. So I'm sure you guys can name me every single business that's on here. Some additional support outlets that we have is tutoring. So if you need help with homework or essays, we have walk-in hours, or you can set up an appointment in our academic advisement center. You'll have an advisor who's gonna walk you through all four years, making sure that you have the right classes to graduate on time. We also have a study abroad program. We have the Office of Accessibility, and that's for any type of learning accommodation that you might need. 
and we have career planning and development. And that's how you're gonna get those internship and job opportunities. We do have career fairs on campus. We take your headshots for LinkedIn. We help you with your resume and interviewing skills. So as far as tuition, to be a commuter, it's around 37,000 and to live on campus, it's around 50,000. I know that is a huge number, but that's just the sticker price. So that's without any type of scholarship or grant. And we have plenty of scholarship opportunities. So first, you always wanna fill out your FAFSA so you'll know what type of federal aid, state aid, or institutional aid you'll qualify for. But on top of that, here are some scholarship opportunities that we have. So we recently went test optional. So you will have the opportunity to possibly qualify for a scholarship, even if you don't submit your SAT scores. We have a Catholic high school scholarship, a recognition award, and that's for any type of community service or leadership experience. And then we also have a talent scholarship, and that's for any talent that you might have in music or art. We are also really big on sports. We have 16 NCAA sports and we are a D2. So here's a list of all of our men's and women's sports and we are a part of the CACC conference. We do have three residence halls. We have Mother Joseph, which is traditional. We have Dominican Hall, which is apartment style, and then Rosary Hall, which is also traditional, but there are 24 hour quiet hours in that dorm. As far as being on campus, parking is free. Freshmen can have cars on campus. Laundry is free. There's literally always gonna be something for you to do on campus. There's so many ways for you to get involved. And then you have unlimited meal swipes so you can eat as many times a day. Here is a list of our campus clubs and organizations. You'll see a picture to the left of me and four of my students. And I show you this to let you know that I started my own organization on campus. I started a fashion club uh, because I saw a need for fashion. That's my background. And it has been so super successful. So I show you guys this to let you know that you have possible uh, possibilities to make change on your campus, whether you're a student or a faculty member. Um, we have a club that started out by students and it turned into a major. So some changes during COVID, we're doing a hybrid model. Um, we have students on campus, but students are learning from home. Everybody's wearing masks and we're still socially distancing. As far as the admissions process, we're rolling admissions and you can apply online um, through Common App or through our website and you'll see the average GPA and SAT scores below. Thank you everybody and enjoy your evening. Thank you so much, Amber. And last but not least, we have Chris Paul from the University uh, of okay. Alabama. Um, thank you, Julie. Uh, thank you. Uh, hello everyone. I'm just gonna pull up my PowerPoint real quick. Uh, so my name is Chris Paul. Um, I am the Central New Jersey Regional Admissions Recruiter um, for the University of Alabama. Um, the University of Alabama is a large public research university. Um, I work specifically for the campus in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Um, I always make that distinction because there are two other campuses, one in Huntsville and one in Birmingham. However, we are not connected uh, for the admissions process. So if you are planning on applying, you want to make sure that you are applying to the Tuscaloosa campus. Uh, Tuscaloosa is a small to medium sized city. Uh, the population is a little over 200,000. Uh, it really has become an extension of the campus. Uh, it, it is also a quintessential college city, uh, and it's a really great place to enjoy uh, Southern hospitality, Southern, uh, Southern weather, and uh, Southern living. Uh, University of Alabama and Tuscaloosa total enrollment is a little under 38,000. Uh, and then our undergraduate en enrollment is um, close to 33,000. Uh, with that, 55% um, of our undergraduates do come from out of state. Uh, so it's a really great environment for out of state students. Um, you can see that we have all 50 states represented on campus. Um, additionally, we do have 76 uh, countries represented internationally. Um, you can also see that New Jersey is the number eight uh, state for the uh, undergraduate population. Uh, for our admissions process, um, we were test optional uh, for 2021 admissions, and um, that final decision is still being considered for fall 2022. 
Uh, if we end up not being test optional, um, then you will be required to submit your official high school uh, transcript and your verified test scores either from College Board or from ACT. Um, we do not require essays. We do not require recommendations. There's no other supplemental material. So it's a, a very straightforward admissions uh, process. Uh, we are also going to be joining the Common App uh, this year. Uh, we're very excited about that. Uh, the Common App uh, portion of application will be available uh, hopefully by July at the latest in August. And then our application on the ua.edu website, uh, you'll see that the, the main link right here is going to be available uh, beginning in July on July 5th. Uh, for majors, we have 70 undergraduate majors, but when you consider the concentrations and also minors, you're looking at about 200 degree uh, undergree, undergraduate degree combinations. Uh, you see we have nine schools and colleges. Uh, we do have an honors college and within the honors college, you'll find seven unique programs for honors, uh, including undergraduate research opportunities and also accelerated master's programs uh, for our business, our, co our college of business. Um, for the Honors College, uh, if we are not test optional, um, you will be required to submit your scores. Uh, those are the requirements you see here. Uh, if we are test optional, there will be alternate ways that you can apply to the Honors Program. Um, students can also apply to the Honors after 12 uh, credit hours, which is essentially the end of your first semester. And uh, that at that point, it would be based on your UA GPA. Uh, we have a lot of great resources uh, for students on campus uh, for career services. Um, we're really encouraging you to engage early, as early as first semester freshman year. Uh, last year, the Princeton Review named the University of Alabama to be the number two university in the country for internship opportunities. And we are also the number one SEC conference uh, university for internships. Um, also, our College of Engineering does offer an extensive co-op program. Um, you would have opportunities both nationally and internationally uh, to complete a co-op. Uh, we are the largest uh, Greek life uh, population, uh, undergraduate population in the country. Uh, so if you're interested in Greek life, it's really an amazing environment. Um, with that, only 30% of our undergraduates participate. Uh, so 70% of our university is not doing Greek life. Um, so there are tons of other ways for you to get involved on campus, form your own communities, both in Tuscaloosa and then hopefully beyond uh, after graduation. Uh, we have over 600 student organizations on campus. Uh, if you're interested in athletics, we are Division I. Um, we also do have club sports available for students who are not competing at the Division I level. And we also have very uh, en engaged intramural programs. A lot of our faculty will participate in the intramural sports programs. And I think that's really cool because it gives students an opportunity to form friendships with their faculty outside of the classroom. Uh, these are some of our more known legends. Um, I wanted to share this um, to just show that we have alumni uh, at the top of their fields ranging uh, from business uh, to entertainment. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to join our legends if you uh, decide to enroll at the University of Alabama. Uh, for housing, we guarantee housing for all first year students. Uh, after first year, the majority of our students will choose to live off campus in Tuscaloosa. It is very inexpensive to live in Tuscaloosa. Uh, if you want to live on campus as an upperclassman, um, we do have housing available as well. Uh, for first year housing, uh, we have three styles of residence halls, uh, apartment style, suite style, which is the most popular, uh, traditional, which is a shared room, uh, and then shared bathroom by floor. And then we also do have a double occupancy, which is a shared room, and then you and your roommate would have a private bathroom. Um, once you're accepted to the university, uh, you can apply for housing. Our housing application will open in October 1st. Anyone who applies by uh, February 1st will have priority housing, which means that you'll be able to select your own housing. If you apply after that date, uh, then housing will be based on assignment. Uh, we also do offer off of automatic scholarships. Uh, these are the test scores and the GPA that you would need to have for those automatic scholarships. Uh, if you are test optional, um, then you will not qualify for these automatic scholarships, but we do have other scholarships called competitive scholarships that you would be able to apply for. Um, also, this is my information. Uh, so if you have any questions, please uh, send them my way. I'm also gonna share this information in the chat. Thank you all for your time tonight. And of course, roll time. Thanks, Chris.
Um, as we wrap up tonight's presentation, I do want to have everybody turn their cameras back on and we're gonna do a quick round robin. I always think it's nice when you as students have this many well-seasoned admission professionals in front of you that can give you a little bit of advice as you go through this process. So we will go in the same order that we started. Ralph, what kind of advice would you have for students as they start this college search process? Several things I would tell them first, this is your process. You have lots of support in your school and your families. You have to take the ball and run with it because you are making the decision for your future. You may not have any choice in your elementary school, your middle school, your high school, but the choice is going to be yours. The second bit of advice is make sure you honor deadlines before a deadline because scholarships, honors programs, et cetera, are gonna be available to those that get there first. And good luck. Excellent advice. Tom from Pitt. Uh, I would say, you know, at this point, uh, most of you are underclassmen, so you have this gift and it's called time. And so take a deep breath. Uh, you've got good people around you. Uh, ask your teachers, ask your counselors. Um, you, you're gonna have time to go visit places, right? Most of us are closed to visitors, but, but there are some that, that are not. And so get out there and develop that spider sense uh, as to what's important to you. Um, and then don't be afraid to press the, prep, the, the, the submit button on applications. Uh, those are the, those are, that would be my advice. How about you, Jordan? Well, as you go through this process, you're going to hear constantly, well, it depends, right? As you look at different universities, it's going to be different for everybody. So my advice is always to keep a spreadsheet of all the different universities you're interested in, all of their different deadlines, uh, because they're all going to be different and they're different requirements, because as you go through the process, you're going to, it's going to get jumbled in your mind. So if you have everything written out for you, um, it's going to make everything so much easier when those deadlines start to come up. Scott. Yeah, so my uh, my biggest piece of advice is to always make sure to ask questions. Uh, all of us are here. Um, a lot of us are regional specifically for, you know, the New Jersey or, um, but you can always call our offices, email our offices, um, and they'll get you in touch with the person that you need to, um, to ask the questions uh, to get you the right kind of information that you're looking for. Just don't be afraid to ask any question uh, that you have. Amber? Um, I would tell you guys that it's definitely about what you want, but I want you to think about exactly what you need. So just consider class sizes, the size of the campus, how the faculty interacts with you, and what the campus environment is going to be like. So just do your research when you're looking for colleges and universities. And Chris, bring us home. I'm uh, picking backing on uh, what a couple of my colleagues have, have stated is you want to start your process early. Um, a lot of a lot of universities like the University of Alabama have early deadlines. Um, I mentioned the housing deadline. Uh, we also do have a, a January 15th scholarship deadline. So you really want to make sure that you're starting your process early and ideally um, completing your application early. That's going to give you a better chance to um, make an informed decision uh, when you finally decide what university you want to attend. Um, that's also going to give you a, a chance to uh, make sure that things are going to be okay financially, uh, you know, possibly get considered for scholarships that you might not otherwise be qualified for if you apply late. Um, so you're you, tonight, coming to this event tonight, you've already started that process. So, so continue uh, to, to be the early bird and, and don't procrastinate um, because you're gonna have a better chance. Um, the other advice I wanted to mention is start uh, uh, your own, an email account that's dedicated specifically to your college search process. Um, you are gonna be sharing your email a lot with all the universities that you're getting information from. And it's gonna be really confusing if, if that's uh, an email, a personal email or a school email. So you really wanna keep all your college search information separate. Excellent, thank you everybody. I think that's all great information. I would also add when you get that email address, don't use it to email colleges for free stuff. We'll, um, we'll definitely probably have a few goodies for you when you come visit campus, but just telling me that if I could get a shirt, I'm gonna love your school more. 
doesn't work that way. So on that note, I want to finish this off tonight and just share a little bit of info here. Um, when you click out of this session, you will have four questions to answer very quickly. Please do that before you head into your evening. That's going to give us great information as we plan future sessions for future students, maybe even yourself. Um, unfortunately, there are no more sessions to sign up for tonight, but fortunately, we have taped every single session um, that happened tonight. So we had hundreds of schools represented at the New Jersey ACAC Virtual College Fair. If you'd like to go back, review any of those, you certainly can. Just go to strivescan.com slash New Jersey. Why that was hard to say, I don't know. But I just want to thank all of our presenters again for sharing some time with us tonight. And best of luck to all of you in your college search. Be well. <laughs>